Hey everyone, my name is Matt. Welcome to my shop. Today is August 30th and this is my weekly shop update. So it's kind of weird to be back in the shop for a shop update because I've been outside for these things for like the last at least six weeks, eight weeks, something like that. I'm so used to saying, welcome to my backyard. <laughs> but I just got back from IWF, the International Woodworking Fair in Atlanta. I had so much fun going to that. A big thanks to Triton Tools for bringing me out to the show. It was a lot of fun to see so many things that I have never seen before at that show. And I didn't really have a whole lot of time to get around and see everything. But the things that I did see were very interesting. <laughs> you had the, with the full line of different, um, I guess, woodworking niches, so to speak. So you have like the small stuff that you and I might know about all the way up to the large industrial stuff, which I had never heard of. So if you want like, like a 30 foot long giant machine that all it does is apply edge banging to plywood, they had that there. If you want a machine that just takes a pile of plywood and makes cabinet boxes out of it, they have that there as well. But they also have these smaller, smaller brands that you and I might know about, like um, well obviously Triton was there, um, like Tormac, um, Lee Valley was there, this, like the, um, the machinery companies like General, uh, Rikon, Sawstop, they were all there as well. So it was cool to see that full range of stuff. But like there were two giant buildings and I only probably walked around for maybe three hours total and I didn't nearly see all of it. <laughs> there was just so much stuff to see. You would have to have a full two days to actually do it justice to go around and actually look at stuff. If you just want to walk around real quick, you could probably do it in a day, but if you want to actually stop at the booths, take a look at stuff, and maybe talk to someone, you would need at least two full days to see the entire show. It was just crazy. <laughs> so big thank you to everyone who stopped by the Triton booth and met me or April. It was a lot of fun to meet so many amazing people. As always, I love going to shows like this because you're always meeting so many awesome, awesome people. So thank you so much. <laughs> so I have a bit of an update on the bandsaw mill, but first let's take a look at some viewer projects. So a few months ago, I showed this fidget motion stool by Matt. This was a project that he was doing for his industrial design classes. So this week, Matt's back with another project as well as his classmate, Erica. Erica made this picnic stool. Now what I love about these projects that Erica and Matt share with me is that they provide the entire thought process and development all the way through from an idea or a problem to finding a solution and developing a product. So with Erica's stool project, she went through the whole process of what are the problems with traditional picnicking, which I guess most people don't really think about, but you know, it's a problem. <laughs> so she went through the entire process of designing a stool that also doubles as a picnic basket with a insulated bag that can be removed in case you want to wash it, for instance. It's a really cool process to see and I have a link to her project page down in the description. Now Matt is also back with another project. He said this project was to design a lamp based on an exploration of material and to complete the design process with an understanding of sustainable design practices and manufacturing. He says the lamp is meant to remind the viewer of the dappling effect inside of a forest when light comes through the trees onto the forest floor. This project was also a finalist at the IES Design with Light competition and received an honorable mention award. So not only is this lamp awesome, but there's just so much detail behind the project that Matt also shares. He actually put together a whole book about the exploration of this project and there'll be a link to both the project page and that book down in the description as well as a link to his previous stool project that they can check out as well. Next this week is a kitchen island by Jacob. He says he started woodworking almost three years ago when he was 14 and he's done quite a few smaller projects but this is his largest so far. He says he's put around 50 hours into the island and it is around four feet by eight feet wide and currently he's making matching cabinets to go with the island. Next is a mahogany door by Michael. This was a commission and the client asked for it to be made from solid African mahogany in the craftsman style. He also added a touch of green and green if you notice the cloud lifts on the upper rail. The joinery on the frame is all Morrison tenon or bridle joints and they are all pegged. Lastly this week is a platform bed by Mike. It's made from Honduran mahogany with elm and poplar drawer sides and backs. 
there are 36 floating tenons in this project for a total of 72 mortises. That's a lot of mortising. <laughs> he said the hairiest part of the project was the mitered corners on the bed rails, which need to come apart for moving the bed. They're held together with a spline for alignment and a bolt and threaded insert to lock them in place. The finish on the bed is armor seal and he used the application method that I detailed in my disappearing facial hair video. <laughs> that was a good one. <laughs> so let me show you some things on the sawmill. So on the bandsaw mill this week, I have just received yesterday the bandsaw wheels. These are 30 inch diameter wheels and they're capable of running a two inch wide band. They're really well balanced and really, really true and really, really heavy. I've got the drive wheel down here. I'm gonna try to pick it up to show you guys. Uh, it's probably, I don't know, maybe like 70, 80 pounds, something like that, all cast iron. But that's where the bandsaw stuff is. This is still like a ways out, but I'm really excited to have this here because it's like, look how big this wheel is and picture this spinning on that mill. <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> So the other thing working on the mill, if I spin you around, I am drilling the holes in the stainless. I have three, no four, four of these done already, or this is the fourth one, and I'm drilling the hole so I can attach these to the frame. So I'm going to finish up drilling the holes in the uh, stainless stuff today, probably. As soon as I get this posted, I'm gonna get back out here and start drilling again, and then I'll drill for the rails as well. And once those are all drilled and the holes are tapped in the rails or holes are tapped for the rails, I'll get to painting that whole frame and getting that all the way. So this weekend, I'm actually going to have a guest here in the shop and outside work on the mill. James Wright from Woodby Wright is going to be coming to visit for a couple of days. And he's going to help me work on the mill. We're going to be working on the carriage, I hope, by then. <laughs> so he'll be here. He'll be in the videos about the carriage when we get going on those videos and the video on drilling and installing the rails and the, uh, I guess technically the bunks will come out in a few days as soon as those holes are done being drilled. But definitely check out James's channel. He does uh, hand tool woodworking. So I always love that. <laughs> so I think that's about all I have for this week. Thank you as always for watching. I greatly appreciate it. If you have any questions or comments about anything I talked about today or anything here in my shop, please feel free to leave me a comment. As always, I'd be happy to answer any questions you might have. And until next time, happy woodworking.